Are you one of those people who make sure that by New Year's Eve, before the clock strikes 12 for New Year's Day, you make sure that you have your money intact inside your wallet. It's folded like this, where in the face is um, seen, and then you put it inside the wallet. So making sure that all year round you have money. Hey, it's Lee. For this video, I am going to talk about some money-saving tips that you can easily do. In fact, I was able to get uh, this process uh, via one of my ESL classes wherein we teach not just English but some practical things to our students. So one of them is actually having a saving school and how to save money. So if kids can do it, we can too, right? So if you're like me who are really thinking of some easy way to understand and to make sure in our own simple way to save some money, then here's the video for you. Okay, so the first thing you have to do is to first record your expenses. Okay, so do it in three categories. Okay, list down the first column, list down um, your needs, basic needs. Are you paying your bills or a tuition fee or those stuff? So. Put all your needs first then the second column are a bit of your negotiable expenses something like um, let's say for me like some negotiable expenses is like my makeup it's not really basic but it's something that is very useful for me and I can maximize it because I wear makeup of course when I go to work when I do uh, my teaching as a teacher of course I have to look presentable as well as when I do vlogs so those are expenses that you can maximize so those are expenses with investment in mind and then the third column is just your wants something that mm, you have to think about before buying so you have your needs you have your expenses that are good for investments and then you have your wants so record them first so you have to know which one is really important which money to, or which part of your money you have to save okay? okay so when it comes to making a budget so you go for your needs first so for your needs of course you make a budget how much is for food how much is uh, to pay the rent and everything so you would know more or less how much you need all right it's not just your needs how much you need for each one so once you know what you need you'll be able to know how much money you have to get or how much money you have to save but of course with this making a budget by the way just to make sure you will allot something for your savings okay so the budget first more for expenses first okay so if you made a budget of the different things that you need first and then you have a savings goal for those expenses for special occasion or for investments and then there's the wants your wants is something like if there's extra okay so once is like mm, still put something for a budget just in case you have extra again it's just in case for extra because um don't buy it it's something like you have to look only if you have extra money okay so at least you have something in mind already just in case there's extra and you don't have to just um buy things out of the whim or out of whim okay for sources of income if you're a student of course you get allowances from your parents if you don't get allowances from your parents maybe you can ask them like what we did when we were young we we have a little competition when we were young so um with our homework and um projects as well if we get good grades there's a certain point my guardian my aunt edit used to do that but what i did is i made sure i don't spend it so there's a corresponding uh, prices for this amount so for this one so what i did was i, I just saved it I saved the money and it was um, at the end of actually at the end of the quarter I was able to collect the money you can do that or 
um, yeah, again, for your allowances, if you get allowances, at least you keep part of it, okay, and not spend everything on it. For this Christmas, if you were able to receive some money from uh, your loved ones and your ninang sinino, then keep keep it, all right? I mean, even like me, I'm working and already 46 years old, and yet my aunt from New Zealand and my other aunts actually gave me some money. So instead of me just spending it because I have money, I kept it. All right, so that's one source of income, a source of money. Uh, what you can also do is, if you're still a student and you don't really have to work yet, you can work at home, right? Maybe you can ask um, your parents if they can, like, like what we did also before when we were young, if like, if we, you know, like this white hair with some of my uh, relatives, if we remove their white hair, it's like, when we were young, it's like one peso each, something like that. So we just have to save it. Or when we do house chores like that, or at least house chores for a neighbor. But it's not really a good suggestion for now because, of course, we are currently um, in the pandemic. Or you want for your classmates, um, you can do or help them in some projects. Maybe you can earn from that. So try to be resourceful. If you're working like me, I have currently an um, English second language uh, job. I personally think I need more aside from um, for that one, for that specific platform. I'm also currently applying actually for another one, but not uh, to replace the first one, especially the first one. I love my students there. Plus, um, Part of the bond is, of course, my uh, tassel and my tail um, certificates. So I'm doing like two jobs. Uh, well, I'm applying for another ESL platform jobs that doesn't have the same schedule as my, the ones I have cur I currently have. So that's additional uh, income for me. Plus, uh, as the business of events business is growing, I am now slowly. Um, getting clients once again because during the pandemic i lied low aside from the fact that my dad died um, i'm not really sold to going out yet but slowly i am because now i'm vaccinated but i'm still very cautious so most of the clients that i have now are referrals actually and uh, referrals from former clients which is great and then there are already inquiries because i'm starting to do my own marketing but a soft type of marketing through my YouTube channel like this one as well as uh, via via my blog so so for that one from the blog or the website I get inquiries and then hopefully I'm also building my own audience here so eventually I can monetize this so there are many things that you can earn from when you are an adult. Even if you have a stable job, maybe you can have a sideline, right? I have a friend who is a makeup artist, but she also does baking, right? So something like that. So it's good that you have, like what, just, what they say, like put a lot of eggs in different baskets, not just one basket. It's good that you have a business. It's good that you have your freelance. Plus, I forgot to tell you, I'm also currently a freelance speech teacher so in like christian academy so i also earn from that and then sometimes i get invited so to do hosting so and also doing workshops so i have different sources of income so better that you have different sources of income so that the more the merrier the more you can save and the more you can help your family right not just the needs and hopefully you can uh, buy things that you also want okay but be careful for now let's stick to the basic first your needs first so so you know the different sources of income so you know how much you need or how much you lack also so of course you have to work for it right if you think that uh your expenses is still more than the income or the money that you receive all right so that's also good that you're aware of that fourth one is you have to avoid unnecessary expenses um i cannot uh, stress this enough i mean i'm also um tempted at times 
But there are things like, do I really need it? Uh, in order for you to think about it, you can do this, uh, like what I do. Um, there are some things that I do add to cart when I do online shopping, and then I, there are things that I write down when I see it. But I don't buy it unless it's really something that I really need. So after a week or two, if I have the money for it, that's the time I have to decide if I should buy it. So that's one way. So make sure when you want something, not because you need it, try to step back and try to give it time to rest. I mean, if you would see my um, my cart and my online, um, the different online shopping platforms like Lazada and Shopee, I have like 50 items on my cart. And then when I have extra, when I think I still need it um, or I can use it and I still want it, then that's the only time I add to cart all right not just because i have the money but also i have to make sure that i still want it and not it and that it's not out of the whim all right so try to avoid unnecessary expenses with the exception of things that is a good investment you have to maximize it like what i said earlier like for my makeup um i used to be a person who doesn't like to wear makeup but because now i do vlogs i also uh, of course i also work as a teacher so it's good at i look presentable to my students all right so i do different teaching plus i have to learn how to wear makeup because i'm also doing some um i also do some hosting so it's good that i do that as well um because for me, it's like an investment where I can use in different things. All right, so those are some things that um, I would, in a way, need as a good investment. But of course, again, if I don't have the extra money for that, uh, then it has to be set aside for, for now. And then when I have the money, that's the only time I buy them. Okay, so be wary of your expenses. Okay, so really think about it. Okay, when it comes to saving, I know it's hard to save. So once you have your money, before you look at your budget, make sure you already remove 10% of it. At least 10%. If you can't do 50%, as some financial advisors say, at least start small. Try 10% first. Remove 10% of uh, the money of your income or any money that comes in, 10% of it. And then, um, then that's the one you have to save. You put in a special container or special wallet or you put it in a different savings account or in, you don't have to touch it. So make sure you at least have 10% of it. It's not much yet, but no matter how small it is, you have to at least 10% of everything starting this year if you want to start easy and well okay lastly have some savings goal with your special expenses so this one example you want to buy gifts for your uh, friends or for their birthday or uh, on valentine's day you want to give something to your loved ones all right then set aside already for that savings goal so that if there's extra money you can immediately also put um, put a ceiling on it on how much you're going to pay for it all right so for future references so think ahead of your savings goal example um i remember i have a student who likes idol cards so she's saving for it this type of amount for that idol cards uh, with her savings but she doesn't splurge everything there's only a certain amount no matter how much she wanted at least it's a it's a separate um budget for the one she's saving and from her actual expenses so that's what you can do 
So those are the things that you can do to save some money in this new year. We have to start right. So I personally still do the things that I mentioned, the superstitious beliefs that um, we do every new year. But of course, to make sure that you have money for the year, make sure you also know how to do your own savings, okay? In a practical, realistic way. All right, so there's nothing wrong with superstitions. Again, I still do it. I mean, we don't take any chances, right? So it's positive thinking. So at least also do something about it uh, realistically, okay? So this is Lee Kondangan, and thank you for watching. Have a great new year.